Okay, hey guys. Um, by now you've uh, seen that I want us as a group to do, or not as a group, but I want you to do your own individual BOD models for Street of Phelps, and I understand that that could be very challenging for some of you, but I really, really want, um, I, I want us to go through this exercise. I thought long and hard about it, and I think it really teaches a lot about the dynamics of, uh, of water quality. It doesn't just have to be BOD, one can model other things in similar ways. But this is going to be a small, uh, steady state uh, model uh, in terms of flow, but dynamic in terms of the BOD and UOD. And so uh, before, before we get started on the model, I thought I'd take you through some of the basic concepts of the Street of Phelps model. That's going to take some of the shock, some of the sort of angst out of working through those things. Um, and at the end of the video, I'll show you, give you a quick example of what that looks like uh, in terms of an Excel spreadsheet. Um, second thing is that, um, well, we'll go through this and then what I'll try and do, or not try and do, but what I'll do over time is do one, or two or three videos taking you through those basic modeling steps and we'll make those steps, uh, turn those into homework so that you're not having to bite large chunks of your project off sort of just as exams come around. So we're talking about the modeling of BOD uh, using the Street of Phelps uh, equations um, and really what you're seeing in front of you I'm going to go to another diagram over here, which is uh, a little bit better, I think. And that is, come on, okay, there it is. Is uh, this whole idea of dissolved oxygen in the water column. Um, your dissolved oxygen, basically, uh, is the source of life for so many things. But there's a lot of stuff that uses it, um, and these are some of the things uh, uh, that are going to consume oxygen along the way. Now, we're going to take all of these things and really, um, really, really simplify them into our model will include the use of uh, biological oxygen, uh, oxy biochemical oxygen demand from both the CBO, from both the carbon and the nitrogen cycle or side. So we're going to really simplify that a lot. We'll be looking at atmospheric re-aeration and then sediment, sediment oxygen demand. I'm also going to include a tiny term that uh, specifically deals with um, uh, non-point source uh, BOD input. And then uh, you'll see we won't deal with chlorophyll A because what, what happens is if you have chlorophyll A, obviously during the day as respiration, at, at least as photosynthesis increases, respiration will go down. So let's have a look at a couple of things in terms of our Street of Phelps model over here. In the Street of Phelps model, basically, if you go back one, okay, uh, there are two things that are happening over here. On the one side, you have um, a rate of degradation, biodegradation of the, of the uh, BOD, or the ultimate oxygen demand in your water column. And uh, on the other hand, you have a rate of O2 addition from the atmosphere. And of course, we're simplifying it. We're not including uh, the rate of addition from photosynthesis. But you have basically two terms. That's uh, delta C over delta T and uh, in terms of degradation. And delta, delta C over delta T in terms of re-aeration. So this one will be a positive, uh, sorry, C, excuse me, C will be, we'll, we'll call that DO. So this will be a negative and this will be a positive term, okay? So that's where C equals our DO concentration. Let's move on. So the rate of uh, oxygen degradation, or is, is this term, is basically negative KD uh, times L, where KD is your um, uh, is your decay coefficient? L 
is your total carbonaceous uh, BOD, your, your oxygen demand, okay? So in this case, we'll just use uh, what, what I'll use uh, in, in the model is, is UOD, and we'll just say that's our total oxygen demand. Um, so what happens to the rate of change in C when L goes up? Well, if L goes up, the rate of change of C will then also go up. So the more BOD you have in your water column, represented by that L, the more you will see a negative change in this, because this is a negative sign. On the other hand, the second thing is you have a rate of addition from the atmosphere uh, of oxygen. Oxygen is coming in from the atmosphere, and this is determined by this, uh, it's shown by this term. It's uh, the re-aeration coefficient is Kr, uh, or it's called, here it's called river oxygenation coefficient. Cs minus C is the, uh, uh, the theoretically calculated uh, saturated DO in the water minus the actual concentration of DO in the water, okay? And we simplify this term to be B. And the difference between saturated and actual DO is that driving force that, if you will, um, that, that will allow the water to re-aerate. So if your actual concentration of, uh, of O2 in the water is very close to your saturated condition, you, you're not going to have much of a driving force. But if your actual concentration of DO is very low versus your saturated condition, then there's a big driving force, and then you will actually see the rate of aeration will increase. So that's essentially what we're seeing here. When C minus, CS minus C increases, in other words, as your DO goes down and down and down, uh, and your rate, uh, your um, uh, and the CS or that that this equation or this term D goes up, then you will also see that the amount of oxygen coming into the water or the rate of reaeration actually increases. This uh, constant Kr is uh, measured in terms of per day, and you can see some of these values over here. Uh, the problem I'll have for you is kind of sitting over here. Um, we're going to also use the O'Connor Dobbins um, equation here uh, because we've got depth in meters and velocity in meters per second. And you'll see in our basic setup conditions we have a, a depth of somewhere around about one and a half to two meters, or, or sorry, just over one meter, and a velocity somewhere around here. So we're going to see our O'Connor Dobbins equation come up, and actually you can just calculate it by uh, by that and, and have that sort of sitting as a parameter in your uh, equation. Now notice that the O'Connor Dobbins aeration coefficient is set for 20 degrees C, and so um, we actually have to um, account for temperature, and because part of our model accounts for temperature anyway because we've got to calculate uh, saturated DO um, at a particular temperature. We've got that anyway so we can calculate our uh, coefficients at a different temperature by using this particular uh, uh, equation. Um, so going back, the difference between C uh, Saturated DO and actual DO is that driving force, um, and of course, and I should have probably had the slide earlier, um, DO is going to be less saturated because there's always going to be respiration and de uh, decomposition in the water. Uh, you've already seen some of these estimates, and you can estimate that from your um, your notes that you have in um, uh, that I gave you at the beginning of, of class. So you can use that equation there to get everything done. So this term Csat minus C is equal to D in the street of Phelps. So to review, um, in the street of Phelps equation, two things are happening to change oxygen or C, we're calling it, 
it in the water. And the one is this rate of or decay. It's so the amount of BOD in the water multiplied by this decay constant, and we're making that a negative. And then, uh, so that's moving the uh, oxygen down, concentrations of oxygen down, while this one is going to, the reaeration coefficient, times the actual difference between uh, DO, or uh, saturated DO and DO, is going to move that number up. So, um, if we're expressing this in terms of our load, uh, or uh, in terms of our, uh, uh, if we're, exp mm, let me just have a look at that. Okay. If, we, if we're expressing this in terms of the difference between DO and saturated DO, it's going to look, look like this. Uh, when you're looking at a Streeter Phelps SAG curve, essentially what you're going to find um, is we're going to have a your BOD or what I'll call UOD it decays continuously. Now this doesn't assume any input of anything from the outside, although you, you might have a, a high starting BOD over here. So it decays over time. And what happens is your DO, as you've got this BOD decay rate going down all the time, your DO drops like a stone until you get to a middle to a low point. By that stage, the amount of BOD in the water is low enough for this thing to go up. Well, what's that look like in terms of the equation? Well, in terms of the equation, uh, your change of concentration over time um, at this at this point is less than zero. In other words, it's a negative. Whereas at this point, your cha change in DO concentration over time is greater than zero. Um, so, in other words, this term over here, degradation, is going to be higher than re aeration in that first part. And over here, re-aeration is going to be higher than degradation in the second part. So, when you kind of... This is where it looks tricky, especially if you're not used to sort of math or um, sort of simple uh, models. Um, it, it, what is neat about this is you can say... Um, if I know my concentration of DO at time T, uh, and I have my rate coefficients, I know my saturate concentration of DO at saturation point, I know my two rate constants, and I know my load, and I can establish a time step. I can actually, based on all these knowns, calculate this unknown, is the concentration of DO at time equals uh, time plus one. Um, so in other words, what you're doing is you're creating a, a little model that is based on, on time steps, on, on uh, time differentials. Um, so, and, that's, and that's what we're going to do. If you have a look at it over here, this is a little spreadsheet that I set up. And um, you, know, you can set up your initial conditions over here. So it's very simple. Um, I'm going to, oh, let me just carry on. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of other things that I want you to include in the model. Don't get mad at me. Uh, we're, you know, it, it'll, it'll come out okay. Um, sediment oxygen demand uh, varies a lot, and we want to include that. Uh, and here you see a couple of estimates. And these are in terms of grams per meter, cube, meter squared of sediment area per day. So you're going to have to know the velocity of your stream to understand how many square meter, and because you know the width of your stream, you'll understand how many square meters uh, the, the, um, of distance, uh, over a particular distance, your water body has traveled. So that's not that difficult. Um, we'll be taking numbers from here 
and I think we'll be using this one. So, whoops, let's go back over here. We'll be looking at this aged sludge, so an average of about 1.5 for your model. Um, I just wanted to sort of an afterthought over here is that Street of Phelps obviously was developed in the time well before math and well before pre before computers. So if you um, if you um, balance these differential equations, you can actually come out with um, a concentration of DO at any particular time that you want. Um, so when you're integrating uh, these equations uh, and, and solving those equations, uh, you can actually calculate any time, uh, for any time, the, the concentration of DO down the river. Now this does not include sediment oxygen demand um, and it does not include uh, um, the input of non-point source pollution which we'll, we'll use. But it's kind of neat because it helps you, uh, you know, it just helps calculate critical times and then this is just the critical thing. I'm not going to ask you to use it but I wanted you to be aware of it. Um, so before we before I finish, let me just show you what this, what this model looks like. Bear with me for a sec. Uh, if you're unfamiliar with the in interface, I am using a MacBook just because I can record um, uh, uh, my screen. You do a screen recording. But what you see over here is um, we've got some general model inputs over here. Um, and then uh, once you've got those basic model inputs, you can derive some of the things uh, over here. So these are all actual formulae. And once you've got your baseline conditions over here, you can start to play around with your model. And for instance, uh, I've got here um, a wastewater discharge of 10 uh, milligram per day and let's change that to say 75 and watch this dissolved oxygen over here. So all of a sudden you're seeing that sag, that sort of characteristic sag curve and then the recovery of dissolved oxygen. Uh, the remaining, what you can also see is the remaining UOD. So this chart over here is simply tracking the amount of UOD that is in the river at the time. So for this, um, you know, we're going to have to learn or do a few things, a few mass balances, a few things that maybe uh, some of you are not familiar with from uh, a while back. And what I'm going to try and do is walk you through that process. Well, uh, I hope this has not been too much like eat, eating a bowl of crickets. I want it to be useful for you. I want you guys to um, uh, really, you know, learn from this and, and gain something from it. Okay, until next time, thank you very much.